Hi everyone, this is going to be a short demonstration of Circom where I'll be talking about how you can write circuits with it, uh, generate proofs and uh, verify them. So uh, let's start. So this is the official documentation of Circom. You can find everything about it over here. So uh, first, let me give a brief intro on why we need Circom for uh, zero knowledge proofs. So uh, basically zero knowledge proofs are of two types, interactive and non-interactive. And uh, for blockchain applications, it is a non-interactive type that is useful because you can use a smart contract as a verifier. And uh, this is where Circom comes in. So these non-interactive uh, zero knowledge proofs have um, various subtypes within them. So ZK snarks is one of them. Uh, you would hear about other kinds of these like ZK snarks in the assignment. So uh, we'll focus on snarks and uh, Circom is a language that allows you to write circuits that can prove any mathematical statement. So as long as you're able to formulate the statement you wish to prove in the form of these circuits, you can generate a zero knowledge proof for it and, uh, uh, and a verifier can verify it easily. So yeah, so basically, as uh, Socom is very liberal, so you can write any kind of uh, statement, but there are certain constraints. And uh, let me show you a short demonstration with a small circuit. So uh, this is the same circuit that's in the documentation with the multiplier. So um, first, the first line, this line specifies the version of Socom compiler that will be used. And after that, you can write a template and this template will contain your code uh, or the circuit right and this is where you initialize this uh, this template and so this circuit will have certain inputs and certain uh, and certain outputs usually one output and uh, these inputs can be public or private uh, if an input is public what that means is that um, the verifier will know what input is given to the circuit and if it's private, the verifier will not. So assume a hypothetical scenario where you need to prove to a verifier that you know two numbers X and Y with a certain product, right? So, and you don't want to reveal these numbers to the verifier. So um, these are the two numbers X and Y and you prove to the verifier that you know uh, that they have a certain product, right? So uh, first you define these two inputs, X and Y, and then you define an output signal called, I'll call, I'm calling it prod. So next you need to define the constraint. So this part is the constraint. So uh, what this means, uh, what this line means is that you are assigning the value of the product X times Y into prod. And simultaneously you're also checking that prod is equal to x into y. So basically this can be broken down into two. Uh, so this is equivalent to yes. So the first line here means that you're assigning the value of x times y to prod. Uh, this is the assignment symbol and the second this is here is a equality uh, constraint. So this basically uh, verifies that prod is equal to x times y. And if you go through a documentation, they recommend you to not use these kinds of uh, assignment plus equality constraint and instead just use this kind of uh, combination of them. So once you have written a circuit, you can uh, start generating the proof. So first you need an input file. So this is the input.json, right? So uh, you need to define the inputs here. I'm defining X as three and Y as seven. And uh, also do know that the output is always public. So uh, the verifier would know that the output is 21, but he would not know that the inputs are seven and three. So uh, yes, so let me start with the process. I've uh, written a script here, which goes through the whole process. And uh, I'll be using this, but uh, when you're starting out with Socom, it's recommended that you go through each command. So you know uh, what each of them does. 
So uh, let me execute this. So uh, now while it's executing, I'll go over the script and explain briefly what each line does. I won't go into too much detail as it's an assignment question. So uh, the first command is where you compile the circuit using circom. So this is what it does. It generates, uh, it generates certain files. One of them is the R1CS or the transfer constraint system file, which basically defines the circuit. And the others are the WASM files and CPP uh, files which you'll use to uh, generate the executable. So uh, ignore this condition for now. So basically uh, there's two ways you can generate the witness. One is using Node.js and another is using CPP. It's recommended to use this for large circuits as it's faster. So, um, so yes, so you run, yeah, you go to this folder and you make run make and you get an executable and you can use it along with the input file to generate the witness file. And then after this, you basically start the powers of Tau ceremony uh, using Snark.js. It come, it has an, it has two phases. Uh, I'll not go into the details here. And once you're done with this um, ceremony, you can generate a verification key. So this is what this does. Uh, you use Snark.js to generate this verification key dot JSON, and and uh, and yeah, the next step is proving the uh, zero knowledge proof. So you can use Snark.js for that. I'll discuss an alternative soon. So using Snark.js, you use this command and you basically give it the, uh, sorry, this is, uh, sorry, this is generating the file, the generating the proof and uh, public.json file. So uh, this generates two files, proof.json and public.json. This will be used in the verification step, which is the next step. So you for verification, you give it three files, verification key, public.json and proof.json, and it will uh, return okay if the proof verifies. But if um, in this, there's no way it doesn't verify, but uh, if there are certain constraints and the constraints are not met, this will fail. Yes, so uh, this process is finished. And uh, as you can see here, the public.json file contains 21. This is actually the output. Uh, as I mentioned, the output is always public. And the proof.json file will contain certain parameters, which is used on uh, the proof. Similarly, there are some parameters in the verification key file. Right, so another alternative is you can use solidity to verify the proof. The way you do that you is you generate a solidity verifier first using this command. So when you run it, it will create this file, which is verifier.sol. And uh, do remember to change this version of solidity as it uses a very old version, but you can just switch it to one of the 0 0.8 new ones. So uh, this may look intimidating, but None of this is of use. You basically uh, copy the contract and deploy it. And then the only function you need is this verify proof function. So this function takes inputs A, B, C, and input, and then it re returns a bool, which is true or false. It's true if the uh, verification is a success and it returns false if it fails. So where would you get A, B, C, and input, right? So to get that, you again have to use Node.js. This is what this command is for. And when you run it, it will generate the function parameters required by the solidity verifier. So uh, it's a bit mixed up here, but this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is input. Right. So uh, that's how you use a solidity verifier. And um, what else? So yeah, uh, one constraint of CIRCOM is that you can only use uh, quadratic constraints. What that means is your constraint should be of the form A times B plus C. So if I do something like this, this will not work. 
So you'll get an error saying that uh, quadrat non quadratic constraints are not allowed. Right. And also, all the operations you do are modulo p. So, uh, firstly, all inputs, all signals are integers of the field f p, where p is a large prime. So, uh, basically, this these inputs can only be integers. And all the operations I do are modulo p. So, um, usually this is not a problem as p is very large, but uh, if your numbers are too large, you can overflow p and lead to inconsistent results. Right. So, yeah, regarding public uh, signals, how you define that is you do this. And within these uh, square brackets, you can write the uh, signals that you want to be public. So this is how you define public inputs and you can also use uh, signal arrays. So you can write something like four inputs as an array. And uh, do remember that if you use a variable here like n, so this n cannot uh, has to be defined while you're compiling. So this has to be a parameter to the template. So the template will take n as a parameter and you have to give n here when you're uh, writing the circuit. So say four. So this will generate a, a array of size four for signal input X. Yeah, so that is basically it. Um, oh yeah, you can also use loops here. Um, there are four loops, while loops, and you can use that. But do remember that the constraints have to be quadratic. So even anywhere you define constraints, make sure it's of the format A times B plus C. Yes, that uh, ends this demo. Thank you.